Greetings, everyone. Here we are two weeks into the new and we trust te very temporary era here at Purdue. I thought it might be time for another update. I cannot say enough to praise our faculty, uh, our staff, our students for the way they have tackled the new remote learning era. We've had fewer problems than we would have thought. Each day this week, over 40,000 uh, students and faculty logged on to the system, meaning that real work and learning was going on even on a largely empty campus. So thanks to everyone and let's hope that, that that kind of progress continues. We hope that campus will be full again uh, before long and certainly by fall. No one can know at this point. Uh, one thing we do know is that uh, even when we are back to full complement, things will not be the same. This fall there will be a flu season, there always is. But this fall, the COVID-19 viral strain will be part of it. We won't all yet have natural immunity and there won't be a vaccine. And so we intend that Purdue be as well prepared as uh, any school in America to uh, manage our way through that season. You know, every year the FBI and other authorities put out a report on the safest campuses and the safest communities and Purdue and West Lafayette are always near the top of that list. We intend to be at the top of anyone's list for the safest uh, places from a public health standpoint too. I've started a task force this week to look at everything we do with the question, uh, how can we be um, a little better protected and, and better able to deal with uh, problems that the flu season might uh, bring us in this unusual year. We'll look at how we teach, how we learn, how we house people, how we feed people, uh, and how the, those of us who uh, support teaching and research uh, do, can do our, our work in ways that are maybe a little different and more protective. Let me close with a word about finances. Under the very best of circumstances, our revenues are going to take a significant hit this year, even if we have as many students as we expected, which is far from certain. Our state appropriations are very likely to go down. Our revenue from events, our donors will uh, not be able probably to be as generous as they would have otherwise. You know, th throughout its history, Purdue has been careful about finances, and that uh, can pay off at a time like this. For one thing, as a, one of the more affordable schools now in the country, we will, I think, remain attractive to students who are having second thoughts about college or where to go. And secondly, at a time when millions of our fellow citizens have already lost their jobs, as you know, we've not had to take that step here at Purdue, and it's our fervent hope that we won't, no matter what comes. But the more careful we are now, the less severe the measures we will have to take later if things do not recover as we hope they will. So things we've already put in place, restrictions on travel and purchasing and hiring, are going to continue into the next fiscal year. And I'll tell you right now that the pay raises that we intended to make starting in uh, July will have to be postponed indefinitely. If things improve enough, maybe we could put them in place before next fiscal year is over, but no promises because none of us can see the future. So that's it for now. We'll do what we can to continue these reports and keep you current on an occasional basis. We want you to know as things change how we're thinking about them and the decisions we're making, trying to make in the best interest of the institution and everybody who's a part of it. We uh, are all in this together and we will get through this together.